population has been affected due to diseases such as EHD, blue tongue, and chronic deer waste. We spoke with Jason Sumners, who is a deer biologist with the Missouri Department of Conservation, to help give you a better understanding of the differences between these diseases. EHD stands for epizootic hemorrhagic disease. It's a virus that kills deer and members of the deer family. It really is part of a larger group of diseases called hemorrhagic diseases, which includes the blue tongue virus and the epizootic hemorrhagic virus. EHD or other hemorrhagic disease viruses are primarily spread by a biting midge fly. So deer concentrate at locations where these midge flies are present, primarily shallow ponds, uh, areas where there are mud flats, and then the, the midge fly bites the, the deer and transmits it to them. Uh, hemorrhagic disease usually results in rather quick and rapid death. So in late summer, early fall, it's not uncommon to find what appears to be a perfectly healthy looking animal dead in a creek or in a pond. Hemorrhagic disease outbreaks typically are short-lived and localized in, the, in their impacts. Uh, we've never seen long-term population level impacts of the hemorrhagic disease virus. These things typically occur in sort of a cycle. Hemorrhagic mortality occurs every year. There's just usually small amounts of it. But we are seeing a little bit of an increased frequency of those outbreaks. With the hemorrhagic disease virus, we see that pretty uniformly most animals are susceptible. Uh, typically during the early months, the early parts of a fawn's life, they're a little less susceptible to exposure. But we really don't see any differentiation between younger animals and older animals when it comes to hemorrhagic disease mortality. It's the deer concentrating at water holes, particularly during drought type conditions, uh, that presents the exposure at that point. Chronic wasting disease is a fatal neurodegenerative disease that's caused by a prion. This prion is transmitted directly from deer to deer or from the environment. So there tends to be a lot of confusion about the dynamic of chronic wasting disease outbreaks and hemorrhagic disease outbreaks. Chronic wasting disease is a disease that takes a minimum of 18 months from the time of infection till the signs of clinical symptoms. So it's a relatively long progressing disease. So typically a sick or emaciated animal related to chronic wasting disease is going to be a, an older animal, two and a half years old or older. They may be exposed or infected at a very young age, but it takes a while for those symptoms to show up. With chronic wasting disease, we see similar patterns in that those female social groups that interact with one another, transmit the disease to one another, uh, and then bucks as they travel among female social groups can, can contract the disease or spread it to other female social groups. But, but it's really that direct animal to animal contact that drives CWD outbreaks. Uh, typically when we see chronic wasting disease having caused mortality, it's a neurodegenerative disease that leads to emaciation and severe body condition decline. And so you'll also see symptoms of, of disorientation and lack of coordination associated with those animals. Real big difference in terms of uh, the long-term effects of those outbreaks is the fact that the hemorrhagic disease virus is transmitted by those biting midge flies that are only around seasonally and chronic wasting disease can be transmitted uh, among deer throughout the entirety of the year. To help eliminate the spread of disease, the Department of Conservation is asking that if you harvest a deer this year that you properly dispose of the carcass. You can do so by making sure that the remains of the deer end up in a landfill. Chronic wasting disease is, to the best of our knowledge, 100% fatal. So if it infects an animal, it kills them. Hemorrhagic disease, while it can kill a large segment of a local population, is not always fatal. Every animal that gets infected with hemorrhagic disease will not die. A female that is exposed and survives, she'll pass those antibodies off in her colostrum to her newborn fawns, and so they get some uh, immunity and protection from that. Chronic wasting disease, there's no evidence that there's any form of immunity to the disease. To tell the difference between the two diseases, it requires us to do testing. Many times the clinical symptoms are pretty similar, especially in a, in a dead deer. Our concern with chronic wasting disease is the long-term impact that it can have on the population. Once it becomes established, it increases in prevalence and it increases in distribution. As long as there are live infected animals out there on the landscape, they're going to continue to transmit the disease. And so more and more animals will become infected and more and more animals will die. If you find signs of chronic deer waste, 
EHD, or have come across dead deer on your property, please be sure to let the Department of Conservation know. They're able to take samples to be sent off to have a better understanding of what killed that specific deer.